Hi everyone. Shall we do the um, proverbial sound check? <laughs> testing, testing. Can you hear me? Hi Donald. Hi everyone. Richard and Stefan and Francine and Denise and thank you very much. Hi Jeanette. I am here. I'm well. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Um, I hope you're all well. I missed you. Um, where I was in France, I didn't have enough internet power in order to do a stream uh, because I always do it on OBS and I'm afraid I, sometimes Netflix didn't even work. <laughs> Hi, Jenny. I had a lovely time. Um, Mib's home is a work of art, really special. She's an interior designer by trade at the moment, and I've known her since I first came over in 1971. And it's, um, I think she's probably one of my closest and oldest friends at the moment. We have shared a lot of time together and she had chickens and a rooster and lovely, lovely, lovely home full of art. So, and really great food. And I had to be careful because the French bread and the cheese, <laughs> very compulsive, I have to say. So how's everyone been? I mean, we've gone through quite a lot with um, the change of Prime Minister here. And um, apparently Italy has a female Prime Minister. Or is she a president? I'm not sure. And things keep going on in the world to challenge us to find peace. So I want to um, focus on that later in our meditation. And if there's anyone that wants a short healing that we can do as a group. Let me know. Hi, Judy. Hi, Timmy. Hi, Marianne. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here, too. It was like missing a part of me. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Um, so, I only took a pencil and a very small watercolor thing and I thought okay I didn't want to carry lots of paints and do all that and I didn't know whether I would be just lying on a couch or cooking or going around looking at things and going to markets which we did do went to a Roman villa from 50 50 BC really old that's very nice to hear, Francine, that your husband's doing well. Fantastic. That's great. So what I want to show you is some of my um, drawings that I did um, with my pencil and then added a few watercolors, things. So here we go. So the first one I did was of my friend Miv, and she's gone, but you'll see her again. And this is her dog, whose name is Lovely. And I've never met a... This is Birdie, her rooster, who is quite the cockerel. And they just wander around these four black hens. And this is Poppy, one of my favorite, favorite friend's dog here in England. And as you might have seen, this is Luna Matthews, new puppy dog. But he says she's a bit bigger now. And um, I really enjoy pencil. I haven't done it in years. And there's this thing about using the pencil. And then an eraser. And putting on and taking off and using my fingers and stuff. It's just, um, and lovely, that little dog is an Italian, Italian 
Oh my goodness. She's tiny. So sweet. It's an Italian greyhound, I think, but she's tiny. And of course, Poppy is um, a shiatsu. Shiatsu, yep. Thank you, Jenny. I'm really loving it. And yes. And Matthews is, I always get the name wrong, this, who has a wonderful temperament. And it starts with a V. And it's a German dog, I think. Maybe some of you know what kind of species he is. But he's darling. Matthew says she is bigger now. And um, she's quite the character, apparently. And she's doing very well in her trainings. Hi, Burby. Nice to see you. I don't think it is Francine a Golden Retriever. It's a German breed. It starts with a V. I know, Luna is. I mean, I started to do some watercolor, but I went back to something just as a simple. So I want to go back up the comments for a second. Oh, hang on. To Jeanette. She says she's doing okay. She had my surgeries and in some pain. I got the shock when they had to operate on both. So Jeanette, would you like a healing from all of us? I'll put you down on a list. I will put you down. Hang on, let me get a pen. Jeanette. Um, perhaps you can tell me what you'd like us to focus on as well. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. I know Nikki <laughs> Luna is a character and I love it there was that one stream where her tail just sort of went around <laughs> and then Matthew's doing some incredible guitar work and he's just looking down at her shaking his head <laughs> he, she is lovely Anyway, hi Elizabeth, welcome. I had a dog like Poppy too, and she looks so much like her. It takes me back years. I left her um, a long time. Hang on a minute, Verbi. Hang on, let's see. Did I get your message as well, you were in France, wrote to you about something to pray about. But I don't think you got those messages. They s didn't seem to go through anyway. It isn't so important anymore. Well, I feel very um, honored that you would have sent me some messages. But as I said, the internet was just terrible. I mean, we get so used to having the connections and stuff. And then when it isn't there, it goes ginger. It's time that you played with the chickens. It's time you took out your pencil. That's it. Vizsla. That's it. Luna is a Vizsla. You got it. Just getting through all this. And maybe Jeanette says, ah, oh, focus on your hair. Okay. What about the pain? Where is your pain at the moment? I tell you, Tim, the countryside down there is so amazing. And it there isn't um, much humanity around. There's just trees. And, um, okay, so Verbi has 
S from her knee. And Denise says her fingers were in pain, but now sadly it's a trip to the surgeon tomorrow for his opinion. Okay, so we've got three people that's, that will cover us, and you want your fingers, Denise. That's great. So now I want to show you some of the photos of the Roman villa. It's um, quite an amazing feeling. Let me find my paperwork. There you are. Okay, go. Mm, there we are. So as soon as the beginning of it comes, Donald, are you okay? I missed your call. I'm sorry. I was uh, had my phone on silent. It's mainly my right underarm, not a good place for stitches, I bet. So here we have the um, mosaics of this villa. It's called um, Villa Siviak. Siviak. Apparently, originally it was a plateau in the 50th century BC. And um, in about 130, the Romans changed it from a large farm area in the middle of farmland into um, a villa. And it was huge, absolutely huge. The, you can see by that drawing how big it was. It had a huge Roman bath. It had... A 1,800 meters of mosaics. Now, this is a church uh, from the 7th century because in the 6th century, the villa went into, uh, it broke down, it had a fire, all kinds of things. And it was also the change of, um, I mean, the villa is was a very, very rich symbol of affluence and it had marble decorations and mosaics and frescoes and heated rooms and a bathhouse just totally luxurious so here we have they have a model there just in the entrance as you go in you probably can't see much actually but this is it they had long corridors had right now it's got this very modern cover because all the walls, all the buildings had just fallen. And then it was covered. Some, I just, I mean, it's from 50 BC. That's how old it is, was. And in the sixth century, it um, was made smaller and had the fire. And this is um, what they discovered. They used to have running hot water for heating and a bath, huge bath. So there's another diagram of what it was. But the close-up of these mosaics, just incredible. The art form, it was really in... Now this is a church in the 7th century. And they built it, it's derelict now, but they built it from the stones that had fallen down from the um, villa. In addition, they took the marble columns that were still left and made this design around the inside. No worry, Jenny. And we're back to the beginning of the Roman villa. But the other interesting thing that I have discovered in this visit, I don't know if you n know, but there's um, driveways, roads. France is known for having these single lines of trees either side of a road. It's just 
magical I've have found. But what I've found out this time, apparently Napoleon asked everyone to build, to plant these trees because he wanted, um, he wanted the returning soldiers from war to have shade as they walked back. And the other thing that I discovered this time is that there are like glades of trees, all the same tree in a certain acre of land. They're magical because they're turning yellow right now. And apparently those are a crop. And there are many fields with these trees, same trees. I don't think they were playing trees. But they're an easy, fast-growing tree. I don't think it was birch. In any case, this is a crop. Apart from vineyards, there are these glades of trees that get cut down to make common things like toothpicks and all kinds of things that we use that are chop, not chopsticks, but things small like that made of wood. And I found it's, it was, as we're going through these beautiful countrysides of vineyards and blue sky and clouds and these glades of trees and the, the lines of, of trees co making a beautiful, beautiful road of shade and I just suddenly thought, wow, this this landscape changes every time, every 10 years when they cut down the, those glades of, of trees, though they rebuild it, replant it. I wonder if they rotate it and put like maybe eight years in or maybe five years in, they have another field of groves. I should have asked that. Hi, Phil. Um, hope all's well with you. As for myself, you're in the hospital in Swindon again tomorrow. Please pray for my recovery from a f elbow issue. What have you done? I'll put you on our list. We'll expand to four people. Phil, elbow. What's wrong with your elbow? Anyway, I'm going to come back. I have to tell you something. <laughs> that part of France, this time of year. Well, life is a challenge sometimes physically. That's for sure. But the uh, amazing things, dis despite that, there's such joy in your heart. And you need to focus on that and then f find out what it is, how this disharmony serves you to become a much wonderful and more happy person and healthier. So each experience is a learning but the one thing <laughs> I had as a challenge was that um, they didn't have mosquitoes this time of year in cooling weather, but they had a little creature called no see, no see, <laughs> because you don't see them except you get stung by them and for me it was like the little stinging thing blew up and I'd swollen fingers you know anything that was sticking outside of the duvet they just you wouldn't even hear them so they're finally better now but it took a while <laughs> Okay, Denise, that would be just fine. 
But I'll put you on my healing list during the week, if that's okay. All right. Um, does anyone else have any no seams? That's it. <laughs> have those here in the e early early summer. Oh my God, where are you, Lori? I mean, is that a real name or is that something that people have just made up? Is there an actual Latin name for what they are? Like, I don't know, gnats or something. No seums. <laughs> Texas. Okay. <laughs> they get around, that's all I can say. <laughs> oh, no seums. <laughs> Early summer. Well, this is late summer in France. Actually, it's autumn, isn't it? Anyway, what I want to do today on our meditation, and we'll focus on the color of green, because it's cleansing and purifying. And as you know, we go in between each healing and give ourselves one. So, let me bring the color up. So we've got spring green. It's still summer in Texas. How long does that last? Goodness. So, as usual, when we're doing this, let's not um, chat to each other and be silent. And we'll talk afterwards, if that's okay. So as usual, let's um, be still and pay attention to your breath as you focus on the spring green. And breathe in and hold it and breathe out. Breathe in the color and hold it and breathe out and breathe in and hold the color and breathe out and still your body and your mind and your feelings. Allow the green to penetrate gently throughout your being, whether you're sitting comfortably or if you're lying down. Just relax and breathe in the color and hold it and relax and let go of the breath. So breathe in, hold it and release. So take the color into you again and close your eyes and feel the color flowing from the top of your head down through your eyes and your ears and your nose and your mouth, your chin, into your neck and relax, relax and relax. Breathe into your shoulders and your arms, to your wrists and out through your fingers. Healing, purifying, releasing. Breathe in into your chest, to your lungs. Purify, cleanse the air and release. Focus on your heart, your feeling heart, your physical heart, your awareness and understanding, your mental being, 
that works through the heart and allow the soul to come and heal invigorate, energize, soften your heart and take the breath and the green further down through your digestive system, your liver, your pancreas, your spleen and have it come down through your spine your nervous system and allow it to spread through all your nervous nerve endings and be calm be refreshed and take it further down to your intestines and your sexual organs, and your hip, and both legs down to the knees, through your calves, ankles, feet, toes, and unite with the earth. And ground yourself within the green of nature and relax and breathe and return back to your body and slowly take the green up through your body, through your spine, your shoulders, your arms, your head, and out and unite with your soul. From that point, let us all join together in a healing group of green. And let us focus on Jeanette, who has requested for us to focus on her hair growing again. So we want to come to her head and surround it with this green and become aware of her hair follicles just underneath the skin and place the spring green there with the light of the soul and gently Whisper. Grow again. Grow again. Be well. Blow away any blockages and bring the newness of a sprout, the green sprout, and let it be happy. And touch Jeanette's heart with joy and pink. And violet, the strength of violet. and joy and see her dancing on the grass and the green entering into her feet and 
back up to her head, full of the dance of joy and healing. Be still. So let's take a candle of light and do the sign of the cross going down the front of the body, back up to the heart center and into the horizontal direction and surround it, her whole body with the light of the candle in a circle and take it around her three times and fill the circle with spring green and amethyst. Now come to your own body and visualize washing your hands in a bowl of salt water up to your elbows and release and breathe in the green throughout your body and put the sign of the cross of the light going down vertically and back up to the heart center and across in every di horizontal direction and surround you in a circle of candlelight. Surround yourself three times. One, two, three, and be still, be quiet. Let's now focus on Verpi. She needs healing for her knee. I don't know which knee it is, so Verbi, both knees are going to get a healing today. So let's this time take the candle and create a network of light backwards and forwards from the top of her head going down the body, slowly, candlelight. And when you come to her knees, go backwards and forwards several times and go around each knee in a circle of light. Surround each knee with this circle of light and create a web of light across because whenever one knee hurts, you'll compensate your posture. So we have to give some strength to the not knee that is needing to work more. And circle around each of them with the candlelight and fill the circle with the green and amethyst and continue weaving going down to the bottom of her feet and do a little sign of the cross, equilateral cross in the circle of light at the bottom of her feet. And then we come up to the body, to her heart center and horizontally finish the cross up to her head with a circle of light around. But we haven't finished. 
Let's allow a slow, calming green to fill her body flowing from the head, going all the way down. But let's focus on her spine. Go from each vertebrae and place three colors on each vertebrae, spring green, sapphire blue, and amethyst. And go from each vertebrae, one by one, down her back. And when you reach the bottom of her spine, let's do the circle of light and the cross and place amethyst there. And allow the energy of the hara to spread out like a golden light into all of her cellular tissues, her nerve endings, her heart. Come back to the knees and touch them with this higher energetic light of her soul. And give her strength to walk further and forward on her life's journey. Come back to her body and let's complete it once again with the candlelight going vertically down her body back up to her heart and out horizontally across her arms and do the circle of light around three times one two three and fill it with spring green sapphire blue and amethyst. Be still. Come back to your own center. Once again, wash your hands in a bowl of salt, water of light, and cleanse up to your elbows, releasing, healing, freeing. Come back to you and do the sign of the cross coming down your body, back to your heart center and out to either side. Circle of light going round three times, one, two, three, and fill it with spring green sapphire blue and amethyst be at peace so let's now focus on Phil who currently is in the hospital. So I'd like to visualize that it's hospital room is radiant with light and spring green.
and amethyst and full of love of pink, safety. And let's come into his body and focus on his elbow. Allow our intuition to be guided to the elbow that needs help. Let's relax it with a sapphire blue this time. And go into the muscular tissues and place the spring green there. And the sapphire blue. And imagine he's under a waterfall of crystal light, purifying his whole body of any tension. And direct it to the elbow. Allow it to shine and heal and purify gently and take that light into his blood capillaries the circulation and feel a smile radiating throughout his body the joy of healing and say, dear soul, heart, mind and body of Phil's elbow and body is full of love. and allow him and his body to know it has the power, the knowledge to heal itself in perfect timing and give him the strength to know And may he forgive himself of whatever caused the problem and learn and forgive. And love himself. And bring love, peace and harmony Restore this to him. Phil, I'd like you to say to yourself, I love who I am. I love my body. I love my mind. Most of all, I love my heart. I am well. May peace be with me. Come back to his body. and surround it with spring green and pink.
Let's do the sign of the cross in the candlelight, coming vertically down his body, back up to his heart center, out either side horizontally and back to his head. And from that point, create a circle of light three times. One, two, three. And once again, fill his circle with spring green. This time, a pale lemon yellow and amethyst. And be still, be quiet. Allow the healings to go deeper. It's doing a good job. Once again, come back to your own body and wash your hands in a bowl of salt crystal water up to your elbows. And this time, let us stand under a waterfall of this crystal light water and cleanse and refresh and bathe in it and be happy, fulfilled, full of hope and wellness. So do the sign of the cross of light going down vertically down your body, back up to your heart center and horizontally across. Do a circle of light at the head three times. One, two, three. And fill it with spring green and pale lemon yellow of your soul. And let's sit in this stillness for a short moment. And in your own time, slowly come back to your room, to the website, to the stream. Slowly, slowly. and open your eyes and come back. I'm glad you could be here, Dory. <laughs> Jenny, the lemon yellow color is the faintest, faintest color of, of yellow. 
you can it's hardly there and it's part of um, protection of connection to your soul energy at least that's what I've been trained to use it for when it's very pale almost not there <laughs> Actually, a lot of times when I'm meditating, it's the color that comes in with the light. It isn't pure, pure, pure light, almost like mercury or sulfur burning. It's got a tinge of this pale, pale, pale yellow on it. Good. I'm, I am glad you like it. You gonna paint some of it? <laughs> Have you been painting since our workshop together? And what kind of dog do you walk for your mom? By the way, I'm offering um, small drawings of people's animals or your loved ones in pencil for um, Probably a hundred pounds, if you'd like that. So let me know. I haven't put it on the website yet, so you have to message me if you want to do that, and we'll work it out. So, my dear friends, it's about time to say uh, good night again. Very pleasant. I really like our energy together helping calming people and yourself <laughs> and me <laughs> so have a really good week let me see what Jenny said she's been using calm uh-huh my mom has a golden retriever nice and I might just take you up on a portrait she is my mom's whole world I'd love to do it Jenny just email me Oh, Denise, let me know. Email me and I'll, we'll figure out the um, way of sending the money. I missed you too, Jenny. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Every week it gets great. I'm happy, Marianne, you have. We're going, I'll put up the replay tomorrow, more than likely. And um, I'm going to go have some dinner now. <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> but. Oh, I'm glad, Francine. I love your heart as well. And Judy, thank you. Ah, the Velvet Underground. I haven't heard them for a while. I know, Richard. I love to your family. And we'll uh, have a good week. You're in my thoughts. Good night, Stefan. Nice. And onwards and upwards forward into the night or the day in the week thank you